The Terrible Two by Mac Barnett and Jory John. Illustrated by Kevin Cornell. Read by Miss Claybaugh. Miles stood next to the wagon full of gifts. This was going to be good. He grabbed a fork and a glass and dinged them together until he had the crowd's attention. Everybody turned to look at him. Hey, it's the new kid, Stuart said. He's dinging that glass. Why is he dinging that glass? With everybody's eyes on him, Miles ascended the gazebo's five short steps. He took the speech from his pocket, cleared his throat, and began, Hello, everybody. My name is Miles Murphy, and I'm the new kid here in Yawnee Valley. I'd love to take this opportunity to say happy birthday to Cody Bertiler. That's as far as he got before a yellow hatchback careened into the parking lot honking its horn. The driver's door flew open and Principal Barkin spilled out. Purple-faced and huffing, Barkin hustled across the grass, waving his arms. Stop everything, he shouted. Stop that kid. An uncomfortable murmur ran through the crowd. Miles Murphy, said Barkin, arriving at the gazebo. Stop this right now. You are done. Stand over there. Miles walked down the gazebo's five short steps. The crowd gasped. Holly smirked. Niles nervously adjusted his sash, and Barkin took the stage. Students, he said. Principal Barkin stood in silence, waiting for everybody to stop talking. When you are planning a prank, it is important to plan for any contingency, and Miles had planned for this. In his pranking notebook under the heading, Possible Disasters, Miles had listed thunderstorm, squirrel attack, and busted by grown-ups. Miles knew, when Principal Barkin had confiscated his invitation, that there was a chance, however slim, that his prank would be compromised. And that's why he had an action plan for this moment. Sneak away with the presents. Miles gripped the wagon's handle. Students, said Principal Barkin. He removed a piece of paper from his pocket. What was it? A behavior report? An expulsion form? A warrant for the arrest of Miles Murphy? Nope. It had guitars and footballs and lightning bolts. It was the invitation Principal Barkin had taken on Thursday. Barkin held it in the air. Students, said Barkin, when Cody Burr Tyler personally invited me to his birthday party, I was stunned. Although I probably shouldn't have been, Cody has always been the kind of upstanding lad who respects his elders. And although I am not even his principal, my understanding is that Cody goes to St. Perpetua, where he is the star on the field and in the classroom, not to mention his band, which, although I am not a big fan of contemporary music, well, even I can plainly see that Cody Burr Tyler really rocked the house. As Barkin made a strumming motion with his hands, Miles began to realize something. He wasn't in trouble. The prank was still on. Miles stopped his retreat. He'd only made it a yard or so. He took his first first breath in 30 seconds and looked at his principal. As I was saying, I assume Cody invited me because I am a pillar of Yawnee Valley, and that is why I'm here, to honor Cody and make sure that he is given a birthday speech by a pillar of the community and not by some kid who just got here and is known to have some behavioral issues, like probably parking my car at the top of some steps. Something hissed loudly. Sorry, said Stuart, that was my present. Again, as I was saying, we are here for Cody Burtyler's birthday. A very special birthday. His, Barkin looked down at the invitation, 13th. Wow, that's a big one. And that's why I pass on best birthday wishes from the whole Barkin family. My son, Josh, sends his regrets. He couldn't be here because it's his mother's birthday. My wife also sends her regrets. She couldn't be here because it's her birthday. A lot of birthdays today. But I wasn't going to miss this party, which is, of course, the biggest of the year. And look at that cake. Can somebody grab me a piece? Niles rushed up to the gazebo with a giant corner slice. To Cody Bertiler, said Principal Barkin, his fork aloft. To Cody Bertiler, said the crowd. Happy birthday, said Barkin through a mouthful of cake. Happy birthday, said the crowd. Principal Barkin smacked his lips a few times. 
I'm sorry. This cake is a little dry. Could someone bring me a juice or something so I can give the rest of my speech? The crowd, tired of hearing Bark and Speak, began chanting, Cody, 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 Cody. Barkin, overcome by the spirit of the crowd, his mouth still full of cake, joined in. Cody, 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 Cody. Barkin clapped his hands and stepped down from the gazebo. All eyes were directed at the empty stage. Miles smoothed the front of his shirt. The prank was back on. This was the moment. This was his moment. It was perfect. He walked back towards the gazebo. The kids chanted, the sun shone, and an electric guitar rift blasted through the park. The crowd parted, and from the midst arose a tall boy wearing a football helmet and a jersey. He bounded past Miles and took the gazebo's five steps in a single leap. The boy had an electric guitar slung around his shoulder. The number on the back of his jersey was one, and the name was Burr Tyler. Chapter 15 Hello, Yanni Valley, the kid said. Happy birthday to me. The electric guitar riff sounded again. Miles swayed slightly as his brain tried to process what was unfolding before him. Cody Burr Tyler, a kid who didn't exist, a kid who Miles made up, was standing in front of him. And he was cool. Although Miles' pranking notebook contained contingency plans for tornado, bird attack, and food poisoning, there was nothing in there for your fictional character magically becomes real, pulls a green pail out from behind the gazebo, and throws footballs into the crowd. But that's what was happening now. Students made a frenzied scramble for the footballs, which Cody had autographed. Principal Barkin, being a good two feet taller than everyone else in the crowd, was catching most of the footballs. He looked absolutely giddy. I'm open! I'm open! he shouted. Cody Burr Tyler held the bucket upside down to show it was empty. The kids groaned and settled down. Hey, all right, that was a lot of fun. But if I could just get serious for a moment, Cody's voice got quiet. I just want to thank you for making my birthday party exactly what I wanted it to be, the party of the year. Principal Barkin, thanks for that moving speech. I wish you were my principal. Barkin applauded, alone. And to all of you, I just have one thing to say. Party down, live large, and thanks for all the presents. The electric guitar started up again. Where was the guitar even coming from? Cody hadn't played the one on his back the whole time. Cody Burr Tyler gave a massive thumbs up to the crowd. They roared. He jumped the banister and landed on the grass. Everybody roared again. Peace out, everybody. Cody Burr Tyler took the wagon's handle from Miles. Thanks for keeping this warm for me, little guy, he said. Miles watched as Cody Burr Tyler sauntered off with the gifts and loaded them into the trunk of a stretch limo, which apparently had pulled up during his speech. Keep the party going without me, everybody, he said. I gotta run. There's another party for me at my house. Then Cody Burr Tyler got into the back seat, still wearing his helmet, and the limo drove away. Chapter 16. What just happened? Miles was now sitting on the bottom step of the gazebo. Seriously, what just happened? Miles sat and wondered. Kids laughed, music played, and Miles just sat. Stuart still seemed to be chasing something. Miles sat. Cars pulled up, parents waved to kids, kids got into cars. The cars drove away, leaving behind clouds of dust, and Miles sat. Stragglers took the last of the food, hot dogs and brownies, but not cake. There was still plenty of cake. Miles sat. Holly and Niles came over and talked to Miles. Miles talked back, but when they left, Miles could not remember what they said. It was all just noise. Everybody left the park, but Miles still sat. Somewhere in the distance, a cow mooed. The sun set, the park lights blazed, the sprinklers came on, and Miles just sat. 
About an hour after dusk, Miles decided that was enough sitting, and he stood up. Miles felt like he had entered a new world. Now that a fake kid had become real, anything was possible. Maybe the gazebo would launch into space and Miles would colonize the Horsehead Nebula. Maybe lightning would strike that oak tree over there, crack it open, and gold coins would pour forth. Maybe a volcano would rise up from the field and lava would devour Yanni Valley, but the eruption's blast would also propel Miles safely back to his old apartment in a pink building that was close to the ocean, with maps on the walls and on the ceiling, back to his old town where he was a max master prankster and everyone knew it. Miles waited a few seconds for something to happen. Nothing happened. All that was left of Cody Bertiler's party was a field full of trash and a platter full of cake. Miles grabbed a garbage bag. He ate a finger full of frosting and then dumped the cake into the bag. He picked up paper plates and candy wrappers, soda bottles and cans, pizza crust and stray potato chips. Miles was supposed to leave the park with a wagon's worth of presents, but all he had was a big bag of trash. He didn't even have the wagon anymore. He'd had that wagon since he was six. Despite what everybody said, Miles was starting to think Cody Bertiler wasn't that cool at all. Take away the football helmet and the electric guitar and all you had left was a wagon thief. The trash bag slung over his shoulder, Miles took one last look at the park. Underneath the picnic table was something he'd somehow missed. It was a present. Miles dropped the trash bag and ran for the table. He got on all fours. The wet grass soaked his knees. Miles crawled under the table and picked up the gift. He looked around for Cody Bertiler, who might at any moment pull up in his limo and claim this last present. But no, Miles was alone. There, under the table, he held the present in his lap. It was the size of a shoebox, and its silver paper shimmered in the moonlight. Miles bit through the ribbon and ripped off the wrapping. It was a shoebox. The lid was taped on. Miles worked his index finger under the tape. He popped off the lid. Tissue paper! He peeled back the paper and peered inside. There, in the box, lying as lifeless as a real dead chicken, was a rubber chicken. This was apparently someone's idea of a joke. He grabbed the chicken by the legs, walked back to his trash bag, and tossed it in. The chicken landed belly up on top of some hot wings. There was a message written on the chicken's belly. Miles reached into the bag and pulled out the chicken. The words were written in big block letters. You can't trick a trickster. Meet me in Sherman's Pasture, Sunday, sunset. Come alone. Who would give this to Cody Burr Tyler? Miles dropped the chicken and ran back to the table. He rummaged through the wrapping and pulled out a tiny gold gift tag. The words were written in delicate cursive. Two miles from Niles. 